Welcome back to the table and another Road to Gen Con overview. I'm back again here with Nelson. You might have seen him on some of our other Road to Gen Con coverage. We're here to talk to you about Marvel Dagger. This is a, the big game coming out from FFG. Uh, with a small caveat, it is already available in some places. However, I think that they're going to have uh, a lot of this at their booth and they're probably going to yeah. sell a lot of it at Gen Con. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's the iconic game for Gen Con for FFG. Let me know of. They, they're known for their surprise releases. That, so that's we'll, fair. We'll, we'll that's see. Fair. <laughs> but, but this is supposed to be a big one. I mean, it's Marvel themed, so you're striking while that iron is very hot. You've got two big Marvel fans here. Um, and it almost feels like they drew a little bit of inspiration from Marvel Champions when they created this game, um, which is something we're both big fans of. But there's definitely a Eldritch Horror vibe here as well, in that they almost took the bones of Eldritch Horror and grafted it with the DNA of Marvel Champions. And I know that sounds like a weird comparison, <laughs> but, but no, that's the but vibe. But after playing it, it was a great comparison. Yeah. Because in this game, you're picking a hero and an aspect, so very similar to Champions, and you're kind of taking over the world, very similar to Eldrix. And so there's a nemesis that you're fighting. Currently, we have set up Loki. We got to beat up on Loki a little bit yeah. earlier. And everyone gets to pick a hero and kind of take on their side schemes and try to mitigate the villain's uh, plot to take over the world. Yeah, and every villain is asymmetric. You're gonna have a villain card. Like you said, we picked Loki, and there's just a variety of things that Loki does. He's got some special powers that he can use on his turn. He's got some damage he can do, and he's got some threat that he can increase. And you're gonna have a threat track, which you can see on the top of the board. Every couple rounds, uh, you're probably going to either try to pass an objective or lose <laughs> an objective because there are a number of nemesis missions that you have to go through. There's like a basic starting mission. And then you see at the top there, there are three missions. And we kind of have this set up as a game in progress. But after the threat reaches the threat marker or you've achieved the goal on the card, you're going to put it above the board on either a check mark or an X side. And that matters because at the end of the game, you're going to have a final showdown. You're going to flip the card over to the other side, and then you're going to fight the villain in like a big epic showdown. But their powers are going to be changed based on whether or not you succeeded or failed those missions. So there's like a setup, playing the game, and then you get into that final encounter. Yep. And the during during the game, you can fight Loki. Now, you're not going to defeat Loki. He's still kind of behind the scenes trying to carry out his master plan, but you can stun him, which does very much make the nemesis uh, round a lot easier on you. Yeah. But then when you do take him to zero health on that final showdown side, the, the heroes win. Or yeah, or you lose. Or you lose. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you always will get to the, the final showdown. And that's one thing I like about the game, I guess I should say, is that like you can lose all three missions uh, and still have a chance of beating the boss at the end. It's just going to be a lot harder. Yeah. Now on your turn, you're just taking actions to do the things we talked about. You're trying to fight the villain. You're trying to fight the minions that populate out here. Um, you're trying to defy the schemes. You're going to have a main scheme and some side schemes that come out. Um, and sometimes you're going to rest and heal. And all of those actions are done on this little player board here that represents one of those aspects. I was playing Captain America. I chose the leadership aspects to pair with him. But there are actually six aspects in this game. And you can mix and match them. And what they give you is an asymmetric power. And even though we all have the same four basic actions, they're different for every character too. Yep. And then also you have three actions in a more than two player game. You have four actions in a two player game. Yeah. But there are three or two basic actions. And then you get a boosted action, which whenever you spend the boosted action icon, on one, of these, uh, on one of these actions, if there is an additional ability, you get that ability if you spin the boost icon. And those are also changed between all the six different aspects. Yeah, and in addition, some of the heroes, like my Captain America here, actually has an action spot on his card. Some of these heroes just have three utility abilities or three you know, things that are, are ongoing, but Cap actually does have a special ability here, and that's going to change throughout the game. Also, each one of these heroes is double-sided. So if I'm not playing the Steve Rogers cap, I could flip it over and I could play the Sam Wilson cap. And this matters because you're going to have some special cards for each of these different heroes. And if one hero ever gets knocked out, you're going to flip to the other side and you're going to take on the role of that other hero as well. So you effectively get two lives in the game. So if you get out knocked out that second time, you just go straight to the showdown no matter how many missions you've got. So that effectively does in the game. But again, even if you're knocked out twice, you do still have an option to win, so you can always pull off that last-minute win. 
Of course, the game is going to keep escalating as more of those side schemes come out, and a lot of those have negative penalties. The villain schemes have some negative penalties. The villain himself has some negative things. Each one of these monsters or enemies that comes out is going to have some kind of negative thing. So there is a lot you have to consider. Yeah, and one of the other things is, just like you can match hero and aspect, the villain has their own specific minion that comes out, but also based on a randomized setup, you get three other enemies that you can mix and match with all the different villains. And so that can lead to the replayability. This time we were playing Loki with some temporal villains with the T-Rex and stuff. Yeah, T-Rex, so, an Egyptian warrior, a Chitari soldier <laughs> coming from all different timelines. Yeah. yeah. Loki was, and Kang teamed up there. <laughs> right, <laughs> Kang sending them back for Loki. Uh, so yeah, you, there are a ton of different villains to choose from. There's a ton of different heroes to to play with and each hero kind of interacts with the board a different way each hero is going to be better at doing a specific thing so you might want to choose your hero lineup based on which villain you're fighting every hero comes with their unique uh, objective that they can use to unlock some special cards and every hero comes with their unique team up ability as well cap has one called avengers assemble which if i can spend three of our team up resource i can call every hero to my space which feels very thematic but that team up resource is shared and you've got this team up track here at the bottom of the board every hero can contribute to that team up but then every other hero can spend it so like for example nelson was playing the hulk and his was like what nine six? it was six it was, it was six. expensive yeah. to use so we all had to kind of work together to get that <laughs> team up track up in order to spend that all for the hulk to use his ability yeah and the hulk's ability was fun but also really cool is it tied into his specific mission so yeah. there is a way that you can pull in the specific mission which will like ryan was saying get you a cool new item support persona it's different for everybody but mine was actually to complete hulk smash so i had to charge it then i had to complete yeah. hulk smash which felt very fun <laughs> yeah and the uh, gameplay is going to go around with players taking their actions so everyone's going to get to take all of their actions and you know you only get three actions in a multiplayer in a more than two player game and those actions are like just even move and fight and things like that so if you're really wanting to plan out your turn you do need to talk with other people at the table and say well we can't let that villain come destroy this base somebody needs to get to that base who can reach that base can we maybe use one of our powers can we maybe use one of these uh, charge cards here are there ways that we can possibly mitigate that before the villain turn because after everybody takes their turns, then the villain acts. You're gonna draw an event card. The event card is going to trigger certain villain abilities. It's gonna trigger certain spawning for the enemies, and it's gonna just have some global effects that are usually not good. Yeah, and so the main idea behind the villain and what they're trying to do is all of these bases, they're trying to make their way to the base and then overrun the base. Yeah. If the villain is at a base at the start of the uh, activation phase and there's not a hero there, they will immediately and automatically overrun the base. If all the bases on the map are overrun, the heroes lose the game. Yeah, that is another way you can lose. Though that's <laughs> probably less likely to happen. I Maybe. don't know, I've gotten close. It, dep it all depends <laughs> on the villain, right? Because yeah. every villain does interact with the board a different way. These locations also have powers though, so if the enemy does overrun that, you lose that power as well. Mm -hmm. So they're really, I mean, this, like El Jator, there is a lot going on that you have to mitigate. You need to be traveling around the globe working together, cooperating, trying to maximize each of those turns. I think they did step back some of the complexity from, yeah. from Eldritch Horror though. So this yeah. is not maybe as daunting of experience, though it is probably still in the longer end. It still has the, the you know, that big table presence like you can see here. <laughs> yep. uh, so there's still like, there is a lot going on, but it is, uh, yeah, you know, it's Marvel, right? So yeah. I think that that's gonna be a huge draw. Yeah. Even if you weren't a fan of Eldritch Horror, you might be willing to give this one a try. I would agree, yeah. All right, well, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us again on the road to Gen Con. Take a look for this one uh, at FFG's booth and maybe a surprise release. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that with any knowledge. <laughs> Absolutely no. But they've done it several years <laughs> before, so we'll see. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully, we'll see you at Gen Con. But until we see you again, keep having fun at the table.